Welcome to my show, You Matter. I'm the host, Deborah Dupre. Today we're going to be talking about Rudolf Steiner and his work relative to human spirituality. I'll be bringing on special guests today, Richard Larson, Ann Albrecht, and Richard's friend, who have studied the Steiner materials and will be contributing their knowledge and advice to our audience. We have the book, Color, Cosmic Memory, Knowledge of the Higher Worlds and Its Attainment, and Hopopono. Last time we talked about how to take back your health with detoxing, supplements, Reiki, and alkaline water. Check us out on MyTV26, YouTube, and Facebook. Click like and subscribe, and you can also reach out to me at my website at DupreReikiAndWellness.com or call me at 209-613-9439. Just know that as you go through each episode, it's going to build on to the next one. And I hope you're staying in heart resonance to lower blood pressure and cortisol levels. And we'll be right back. We're going to go to commercial. Since Einstein and the discovery of quantum physics, it has been known that everything that exists is energy. Energy is all there is. The only difference is that physical matter, such as a table, a chair, or a car, is the seen energy. The unseen energy is sound, light, radio waves, radiation. They vibrate at a different frequency and a different rate. Reiki is used to assist with many ailments. If you're having a surgery, if you um, need help recovering, if you were diagnosed with chronic pain, fatigue, inflammation, diabetes, arthritis, then uh, we can connect to the angels and the guides using tones, mantras, selenite swords of light. I use the Ankh to work within the physical pain, body, as well as the emotional field. Reiki can also be done in person or done remotely. I'm also a channel medium. I offer readings. If you would like to get involved in mentoring, you can please reach out to me on my website. I'll be forming groups now. If you would like to set up a session or get a reading or have any conversation about any of the pain or the inflammation or issues you're having, please submit a request to my website and reach out to me. Thank you. Welcome back to You Matter. And right now we're going to talk to Richard Larson, who's going to take you through the introduction of some of the Steiner material. And Rich, go ahead and take us in, take, us, take it away. All right, this presentation of You Matter is connected to some of the ideas, thoughts, and concepts of Rudolf Steiner, a philosopher, thinker, teacher, circa 1861 to 1925. This attempt is meant to coordinate with higher spiritual forms as proposed by Deborah Dupre, founder of You Matter. Suggested reading is Cosmic Memory, knowledge of the higher worlds and its attainment and color. This is not meant to be a persuasion, but rather a possibility of enlightenment. You matter, Steiner, cosmic memory. Rudolf Steiner, here's one of those figures who appear at critical moments in human history and whose contribution places him into the vanguard of the progress of mankind. The ph philosophical outlook of Rudolf Steiner embraces such fundamental questions as the being of man, the nature and purpose of freedom, the meaning of evolution, the relation of man to nature, the life after death and before birth, on these and similar subjects, Steiner had unexpectedly new, inspiring, and thoughts-provoking things to say. Through a study of his writings, one can come to a clear, reasonable, comprehensive understanding of his place in the universe. It is noteworthy that all of his years of work, Steiner made no appeal to emotionalism or sectarianism in his readers or hearers. 
His scrupulous regard and steep respect for the freedom of every man shines through everything he produced. The slightest compulsion or persuasion he considered an affront to the dignity and ability of the human being. Therefore, he confined himself to objective statements to his writing and speaking, leaving his readers entirely free to reject or accept his words. More than a hundred years ago, Rudolf Steiner wrote the following, In the future, we will eliminate the soul with medicine. Under the pretext of a healthy point of view, there will be a vaccine by which the human body will be treated as soon as possible, directly at birth, so that the human being cannot develop the thought of the existence of soul and spirit. To materialistic doctors will be entrusted the task of removing the soul of humanity. As today people are vaccinated against this disease or that disease, so in the future children will be vaccinated with a substance that can be produced precisely in such a way that people, thanks to this vaccination, will be immune to being subjected to the madness of spiritual life. He would be extremely smart, but he would not develop a conscience, and that is the true goal of some materialistic circles. With such a vaccine, you can easily make the etheric body loose in the physical body. Once the etheric body is detached, the relationship between the universe and the etheric body would become extremely unstable, and man would become an automaton. For the physical body of man must be polished on this earth by spiritual will. So the vaccine becomes a kind of aramanic force. Man can no longer get rid of a given materialistic feeling. He becomes materialist of constitution and can no longer rise to the spiritual. Thank you. We're going to cut to commercial. We'll be right back. Every journey begins with a single step. Are you ready to take yours? Here at Modesto Junior College, we can help you begin. The college offers a variety of programs and opportunities, including financial aid. MJC students can transfer to four-year colleges after graduating. Our instructors will prepare you for a successful future in the field of your choice. If you want a quality, affordable education with unlimited horizons, make Modesto Junior College your first step. Okay, welcome back to You Matter, um, Deborah Dupre, and um, let's talk about the vaccines real quick. So, Anne, um, what, did your, what is your take on what Richard just mentioned? Well, I have a great deal of respect for the mind of Rudolf Steiner. However, I don't believe beyond the etheric body that the higher self or the nature of the mind, the perfect state of being, can be destroyed by vaccine. That is beyond everything physical, and it cannot be destroyed, as in... Bon tradition, the nature of the mind is like a grand space or a sky, and there are elements of the sky, like weather and tornadoes and storms, etc., etc., just like the idea of a vaccine. But that is not the real self, it's just an image that appears. And so the real self is the sky, the ultimate primordial presence. And that's who we all really are, and that can never be taken away. Also, Ho'oponopono talks about it in terms of I am the I. And the I am the I is the same great space or sky being of ultimate oneness that can never be taken over because it produced everything. And it's where we are all united in oneness, and there's no separation, and there's no duality. It's perfection. Right. So, Richard's friend on the phone, do you want to weigh in on that? Well, 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 that's a lot of, uh, a lot of information to consider in just a couple of seconds. Our, our I, I am our higher, highest manifest of being that uh, apparently uh, is the newest part of the human being. The process of individuation uh, has been cumulative over a very long, long period. 
came from. Where that came from. Okay. Because we are, uh, we're certainly complicated beings. Aspects of ourselves, you know, uh, it's mm-hmm. not uh, readily available. We perceive one seventieth of the physical spectrum, mm-hmm. and we see our what we think is our physical body. You know, our our head and uh, torso and arms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but we're kind of like a big column of water in actuality. Mm-hmm. With gases and you know the air, of, of course, and the the veins or the blood. Blood is really really important. So uh, interesting subject. Uh, a couple of shows actually. Okay. But if you want to... Okay. Well, let me um, let me move on to the next section, and then we'll come back with that. Um, all right. Yeah. Let's go to the commercial, and then we'll come right back. Mm-hmm. Since Einstein and the discovery of quantum physics, it has been known that everything that exists is energy. Energy is all there is. The only difference is that physical matter, such as a table, a chair, or a car, is the seen energy. The unseen energy is sound, light, radio waves, radiation. They vibrate at a different frequency and a different rate. Reiki is used to assist with many ailments. If you're having a surgery, if you um, need help recovering, if you were diagnosed with chronic pain, fatigue, inflammation, diabetes, arthritis, then uh, we can connect to the angels and the guides using tones, mantras, selenite swords of light. I use the Ankh to work within the physical pain body as well as the emotional field. Reiki can also be done in person or done remotely. I'm also a channel medium. I offer readings. If you would like to get involved in mentoring, you can please reach out to me on my website. I'll be forming groups now. If you would like to set up a session or get a reading or have any conversation about any of the pain or the inflammation or issues you're having, please submit a request to my website and reach out to me. Thank you. All right, welcome back to You Matter. Uh, Lecture one, Dornak, May 6, 1921, Color, Experience, Image, Color. The reason I chose this particular lecture and the book, Color, by Rudy Steiner is because there's a lot of talk today about white privilege and BLM. I wanna put this into a spiritual discussion around what color is and what it truly represents based on the teachings of Steiner. He has always been able to speak on timely subjects no matter what the decade. I find this very thought-provoking 100 years later that we are still talking about colors. So when using the color green, peach blossom, and blue, green is the color of a plant uniquely its own. We can now try through green of the plant to penetrate the objective nature of color instead of remaining as hitherto within its subjective aspects. What is the plant which can reveal the color green to us in such a special way? From the spiritual science you know that the plant owes its existence to the fact that besides its physical body it has an etheric body. It is the etheric body which is the source of life in the plant. But the etheric body is not green. What makes the plant green is to be found in its physical body. Although green belongs to the plant in a most intimate way, it is not the essential nature of the plant that lies in the etheric body. It would be a mineral, and it is the mineral nature of the plant that lies in the etheric body. So when we use Reiki, we, we go through the etheric body and we look at the etheric body as well as the, you know, the plant has an etheric body, the person has an etheric body. If the plant had no etheric body, it would be a mineral, and it is the mineral nature of the plant that appears as green. The etheric body is quite a different color. Although it does reveal itself in the plant through the green of the mineral element, but in taking green, from the plant, it is just as if we had made a copy of something. 
What has been abstracted from the etheric in green is really only a picture or an image of the plant. So think of the green screen. Think of uh, a carbon copy of something. It's an image. It is not the actual essence of the plant. It is the image. So the characteristic of a plant can only be green. The animal possesses a soul. Man has a soul and a spirit. The mineral is without life. Life is a particular characteristic of a plant. The animal has, in addition, a soul. The mineral kingdom is also without soul. Man has, beside these qualities, a spirit. We cannot say of man, animal, or mineral that life is the essential quality in each case. It is something else. With the plant, life is its essential characteristic. The color green is the image of this life. We can therefore say quite objectively, green represents the lifeless image of the living. If a man really tries to become aware that he is being of soul and thinks of his inner life of soul as being present within his physical form, then he will also realize that the soul must be visible to some extent in the physical form. So when you're at the hospital and you see somebody in yellow and green, you know that they're not doing well. The coloring is coming through in a, in a physical form in the color of his skin. So when you see somebody not doing well, it's probably because they're ill and they are looking not well. What this means can best be realized by looking at a man whose soul is no longer fully present in his skin, whose outer form is no longer ensouled. What happens to such a man? He turns green. Life is still there, but he turns a peculiar green of the complexion when the soul is no longer fully present. If you've ever been into a hospital and seen someone turn green, uh, sickly people have this look before they die. This is disease or the soul starting to release from the body. So the effect shows clearly in the human complexion. On the other hand, the more a man's complexion takes on a particular ruddy hue, the more we are aware of how he lives in it. So if we are observing the temperament of a green person and one with a really fresh complexion, it becomes evident how the soul lives in the actual color of the skin. Let's go to commercial. We'll be right back. At this moment, in Stockton, Sacramento, and San Francisco, a University of the Pacific student has made a decision. A decision to learn, live, and lead with purpose in mind. Here, it's all about moments. Moments that change lives, families, communities, economies, the world. At University of the Pacific, these moments give life purpose. They give us purpose, too. After all, we share one future. Join us. University of the Pacific. So welcome back to You Matter, I'm Deborah, and um, let's talk about when somebody is ill or somebody comes back and their coloring is now they have rosy cheeks or they seem healthier, it's their spirit that is coming through the skin. It is not the skin itself. It is the essence of that being that is coming through. And that is what I wanted to talk about. So. Anne, you want to jump in? Yeah, we're talking about manifestation into physical, correct? Yes. So physical is coming from a higher self. And the higher self can manifest through, through the soul and through the etheric body, etc. But the highest portion is beyond physical. So when we're talking about, for example, bone tradition, these ladies the 30 Dakina in Sanskrit or Kadro in Tibetan are enlightened women. They are Buddhas, they are enlightened women. And this is Kozo Bomo, a picture of an enlightened woman from Tibet in the Bon tradition. So when you go beyond what is physical, again you're going beyond what is a thought or what is a manifestation. So when you're going to your oneness, you no longer see color through your own thinking. You become oneness, and if color appears, it is not from your thinking, it is coming from the nature of the mind. 
-hmm. and any color can appear. And they even say when light appears, it's a thousand times more bright than the sun or the moon. Mm. It's the essence of who you really are, the perfect oneness. It's completely devoid of individuation and completely encompassing everything and everyone. Yeah. So Richard, you want to add anything? Well, I would concur with what Anne just said. Uh, since I do some artwork occasionally, uh, I can refer to the coloration scenario. But uh, well stated, I think uh, that has great viability. And Richard's friend on the phone, do you want to jump in? Well, uh, harmony in, in thought uh, is important. That, that helps everything resonate in greater uh, cohesion. The, uh, the capacity to think clearly is also uh, part of being in alignment. The, uh, the human being has the individuality, the, the animals are more group soul oriented. Now some of the people uh, more that go back to a more of a tribal are more in the group as well. So uh, people are at different levels in their development. Uh, we have different groups, different colors. Uh, we're all here working to to become more harmonious, to hold the rule, if you will, ought to be employed uh, more, which would ease and create a more harmonious world. I don't All know right. That May I interject here? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I think it is, it is uh, within the, uh, the parameters of our, our discussion. Okay, so Anne, what... Yeah, I think we all came from oneness and perfection. That's creation. And now we're trying to go back to it, to be that part of, of the nature of the mind. It's not through our thinking. That's a path for us in this physical 3D realm. We use our thoughts into the fourth and fifth D. But those thoughts help us on a path to get to the oneness where there is no thinking you're already dissolved into oneness. But we're not there yet. We're <laughs> well, we are. We we're, came from we, there. We came from but there. But we're trying, to, we're like an onion. We're trying to pull the layers <laughs> we're, away. We're in progression. We're, we're in the process of but trying to. But we came, to, our true self is that oneness and perfection. True. We've just lost touch with it. So it is a reconnection. Adrian, or, or I'm sorry, Rich's friend, would you agree that we are a in the process of the reconnection of the lower self to the higher uh, self, to get we're, back we're in. in progress. We have the great law of cause and effect that mm -hmm. involves life everywhere. All the beings, uh, apparently, that are part of our supporting cast, not just the elemental beings, but the, the hierarchical beings above humanity, the angels, archangels, etc., going way, 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 way up. But there, there's rhyme and uh, reason and, and rhythm which is externalized by the, the great law. Right. So we have situations that come up invariably that we have to deal with uh, in love, ideally, and that's part of our development. Yes, we came from, uh, from the all, but uh, there was the fall. You know, the fall is part of history, going way, 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 way back. That's one good thing about Rudolf Steiner. He got into the history of humanity uh, and, so, and the wisdom the anthroposophy, part of spiritual science. So, history of man, who is man that we are mindful of? I have a question for um, uh, Richard's friend. Is uh, or was Rudolf Steiner a 33 degree Mason? No, no, he was an initiate. He was not a, but you know, and that whole thing is not quite understood, uh, what a 33. Uh, he was involved, uh, that he was asked to be part, he was, he was part of the Theosophical Society at one point, then mm -hmm. that broke off into his uh, organization, which was Anthroposophy. Yeah, I'm just but wondering was, uh, whether his background... Uh, a saintly man, uh, nobody, uh, of course his work was barred very quickly by a couple, I need not mention at this point, because he was revealing things that were 
previously not uh, available for the public, the yes. school teachings, basically. Yes. And this is for the modern era. You know, you have all this stuff. There's always been uh, the exoteric and the esoteric teachings for humanity. And humanity has progressed in stages. It's never the same old, same old. So, uh, no, he was not. Uh, and again, you have a different. derived from masonry that he got some of his knowledge because he did believe that you needed to you should be living a life of fulfillment well, of, the, of being happy uh, and, uh, the, the, the difference with Rudolf Steiner was that he re repeatedly said this is the way that I have seen it and experienced that it wasn't from the old books etc mm -hmm. that was a big big difference he had the capacity to go through the record of everything that's ever occurred uh, and planet Earth. It's called the Akashic Record. Akashic, okay. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's take a commercial. Mm -hmm. Since Einstein and the discovery of quantum physics, it has been known that everything that exists is energy. Energy is all there is. The only difference is that physical matter, such as a table, a chair, or a car, is the seen energy. The unseen energy is sound, light, radio waves, radiation. They vibrate at a different frequency and a different rate. Reiki is used to assist with many ailments. If you're having a surgery, if you um, need help recovering, if you were diagnosed with chronic pain, fatigue, inflammation, diabetes, arthritis, then uh, we can connect to the angels and the guides using tones, mantras, selenite, swords of light. I use the Ankh to work within the physical pain, body, as well as the emotional field. Reiki can also be done in person or done remotely. I'm also a channel medium. I offer readings. If you would like to get involved in mentoring, you can please reach out to me on my website. I'll be forming groups now. If you would like to set up a session or get a reading or have any conversation about any of the pain or the inflammation or issues you're having, please submit a request to my website and reach out to me. Thank you. Welcome back to You Matter. Okay, well, we've been having a lively discussion in here. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about peach blossom color next. Peach blossom represents the living image of the soul. When we awake in the morning and the light streams in around us and through us, we become inwardly aware of ourselves. We feel an inner kinship between the light and our own essential being. And at night, if we wake up in the dense darkness, we feel we cannot reach our real being. We have returned to some extent to ourselves. But under such conditions, we do not feel in our true element. We know, too, that what we receive from light is a coming to ourselves. Light is information. We take in more light as we become more awakened to the cosmic forces of energy emitting from the sun. We are receiving the light the way a solar panel is used to create energy. We are all energy beings. It is this awareness that brings us into the consciousness and awareness of the fact that we are all one. This gets back to what Anne was saying in the Hobopono. We are all one and we come from this original consciousness and awareness. There is no contradiction in the fact that the blind are without this experience. The point is that their organism is designed for it. We have the same relationship to the light that our I am has to the world yet not, not quite the same way. Since we cannot say that because of the light fills us, we gain our I am nevertheless. For us to gain this I am light is essential if we are beings with sight. What underlies this fact? In light, which we have said is represented by white, we have still to learn the inner connection between the two. 
So if we find what really fills us with spirit and connects us with our own spirit, this is how we reconnect to the higher self and to the light. So there is a definite connection between the I am, our spiritual being, and this experience of the light shining through us. And if we grasp this feeling, and all that lives in light and color must first be grasped as feeling, we may say there is a distinction between light and that which appears as spirit in the I am. Nevertheless, the light gives us something of our own spirit in such a way we shall be able through the light to experience how the I am becomes inwardly aware of itself by means of the light. The I am is spiritual, but it must experience itself within the soul. This it does when it feels itself filled with light. We may express this in the formula White or light represents the soul's image of the spirit. So I'm going to cut here to commercial, and we'll be right back. Every journey begins with a single step. Are you ready to take yours? Here at Modesto Junior College, we can help you begin. The college offers a variety of programs and opportunities, including financial aid. MJC students can transfer to four-year colleges after graduating. Our instructors will prepare you for a successful future in the field of your choice. If you want a quality, affordable education with unlimited horizons, make Modesto Junior College your first step. Okay, so welcome back to You Matter. We're going to have a conversation about the white formula. Uh, representing the image of the spirit. So Mopopono talks directly about this as far as the I am and the I being. Yeah, the I am is the awakened spirit mm -hmm. and with bone it's probably the nature of the mind and the senses and the colors are kind of paths for getting there. They're getting inside rather than outside. It's not individuation there walking into in the inner, it's getting connected with the spiritual, which is a oneness. And so this can be done through the senses, and actually there are five senses, which are the sound, the smell, the taste, the touch, and the spirit. And through those you come more and more inward until you no longer depend on them, until you've reached that state of I am the I am, and in Bon, it's the nature of the mind. And there can be color, there can be lots of color, but it's not coming from your senses. It's coming from the nature of the mind or the I am. Would you be willing to read that section of, course, of, of the Hopo Pono that, that you have there? Because I think yeah. it's, it's very appropriate for what we have in this, this section. Yeah. This is the uh, I am the I. Perfect. And it's translated into English from Hawaiian. Mm. I come forth from the void into light. I am the breath that nurtures life. Mm. I am that emptiness, that hollowness beyond all consciousness. Mm. The I, the id, the all, I draw my bow of rainbows across the waters, the continuum of mind with matters. I am the incoming and outgoing of breath, the invisible, untouchable breeze, the undefinable atom of creation, I am the I. That is absolutely beautiful. And it follows the same with the nature of the And mind. I was going to say, it looks like the Kuan Yin of, mm -hmm. of the bone. Mm -hmm. That's the Kuan Yin that you have there. Yeah, this is a, what they call a cadre, or in Sanskrit, because it's so old, their civilization is 18,000 years old. And this is one of 30. Buddha women. And in Vaughan, a Buddha is not one person. There are thousands of Buddhas who reach enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And they have many, many women. And so in Vaughan, the feminine side and the masculine side come together. They're not separated. Mm -hmm. And these are the enlightened Buddha women. And when we use the swords, we always invoke the, the Kuan Yin mm -hmm. or the Buddha. And that's the one from <clears throat> China. And we add the, the light into the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's that emptiness, the void which you come from. Right. So Ho'oponopono is saying that you come from the void. You do. And you go back to the, the void. void. And you have many paths. You have, you know, every religion has a path or a routine or a methodology of going back. But they're all different. 
and you have to choose which way you would like to go back. And and Richard's friend, we talk about that in cosmic memory, right? <coughs> we talk about. Well, I have looked at that uh, specifically lately, though I've read it a few times. And historically, you know, <coughs> different teachings have come because humanity progresses. They're always different. Uh, over a period of time, things can become changed. <coughs> you go beyond the physical, you don't reincarnate again. Another place, but uh, that's just my belief. We didn't come from apes, no. 
We came from the, we came from the the the, the stars. Let me out of here again. Stay in with me. That's much more. That's much more correct. When we go to sleep, we go out. And part of us stays in bed. And part of us goes out. That's why they call it the astral body. Yeah, we're in the astral trail. But, yeah. But most people don't have the capacity to remember. You go out and you don't remember. It's a third of our lives where we sleep. Well, I remember okay. some of it, but yeah, a lot of people don't. I remember a lot. Most, most don't. Yeah, by the way, we also, as human beings, Apple, we have a lot of baggage. Clarity, not so easy for most people, especially when they're uh, burdened with this and that. Right, right. They're because burdened with the materialistic They're stuck world. in the world. Yeah. They're stuck in the cycle they call samsara. The, well, and, and today we have technology that does amazing, amazing things. Yeah, and it right. emanates amazing things, too. Right. Is it real or is it memorized? Right. Well, that's what we were talking about with the color green. It's an image. It's not the essence of, of what it is. It's the image well, or the copy. May, may, I mention, may I mention something yeah. that I think is relevant? Because, uh, you know, different levels of seership or, or clairvoyance or a psychic is a little bit other, but there's a number of very good medical tools that I've known that they all agree that the zone, the human being, the healthy human being, uh, the rest the color resonation is consistent. Hmm. It's absolutely consistent. Nice. So when when a person is healthy it's this way, that way, and the other way. Mm -hmm. So they see that. Yeah, you see it in the auric field, and you see it in the color exactly. around the etheric body. That's what I was talking about during the yeah. during reading yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. color, I see the etheric body, and I was explaining to Anne on the way over here that I had a I had a client last week, and on the outer rim of the etheric body, I could see this black outline. And I knew that there was a past life that this person had died during this plague. And they were processing it in this lifetime. And so yeah. part of it was there. part of it was a release of that before it manifested into an illness in the physical body, but it was a way for that person to release that coming up. And um and using different essential oils and using a way to, uh, using Reiki and a way to kind of release that, that level, that layer, so that person could become healthy again. Um, and, but in a medical, in a Western medical, they would give you a, you know, a pill or something that would try to, um, you know, heal the physical body, but they're not looking at the etheric body to see what, what may have been causing that problem in the first place. Uh, observing symptoms and prescribing pharmaceuticals. Yes, yes. So, all right. Well, let's let's continue on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to come back and we're going to we're going to continue on here with with this. Since Einstein and the discovery of quantum physics, it has been known that everything that exists is energy. Energy is all there is. The only difference is that physical matter, such as a table, a chair, or a car, is the seen energy. The unseen energy is sound, light, radio waves, radiation. They vibrate at a different frequency and a different rate. Reiki is used to assist with many ailments. If you're having a surgery, if you um, need help recovering, if you were diagnosed with chronic pain, fatigue, inflammation, diabetes, arthritis, then uh, we can connect to the angels and the guides using tones, mantras, selenite swords of light. I use the Ankh to work within the physical pain body as well as the emotional field. Reiki can also be done in person or done remotely. I'm also a channel medium. I offer readings. If you would like to get involved in mentoring, you can please reach out to me on my website. I'll be forming groups now. 
If you would like to set up a session or get a reading or have any conversation about any of the pain or the inflammation or issues you're having, please submit a request to my website and reach out to me. Thank you. Okay, welcome back to You Matter. We covered the formula of white. White or light represents the soul's image of the spirit. And um, we, we had a really good discussion talking about how that works. Now we're going to move on to the color of black. Carbon can also become quite clear and transparent indeed, a diamond. We will be able to understand this connection of blackness with carbon most clearly. For black is so characteristic of carbon that were it not black but white and transparent, it would be a diamond. So life is driven out of the plant when it becomes carbon. We saw that with the fires recently here in California. As we drive through our communities, you can see some of the charred black on the side of the hills. Black shows itself as alien to life or hostile to life, and when plants are carbonized, they turn black. Life then can do nothing in blackness, and the soul, well, our soul life deserts us when this awful blackness is within us. But the spirit will flourish. The spirit can penetrate the blackness and assert itself within it. Modern day healers call this the dark night of the soul or the deep spiritual work. This is where it is important to understand how Reiki and other energy healing can help to remove the dark heavy blockages in the spiritual body in order to regain the light back into itself and to flourish. Now we have this formula. Black represents the spiritual image of the lifeless. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. Thank you. At this moment, in Stockton, Sacramento, and San Francisco, a University of the Pacific student has made a decision. A decision to learn, live, and lead with purpose in mind. Here, it's all about moments. Moments that change lives, families, communities, economies, the world. At University of the Pacific, these moments give life purpose. They give us purpose, too. After all, we share one future. Join us. University of the Pacific. All right, welcome back to You Matter. We're going to talk about um, the lifelessness and the blackness of the carbon. And uh, we were driving over here today, we were talking about the charring of the hills and the remineralization of the earth. And sometimes the way that we see the way that it looks as if it's a death. And sometimes out of a death, you can have a rebirth with the dark to the light or you go through a darkness of the soul, or you go through an illness, or you go through some kind of suffering, and it seems at the time like everything around you is black, and everything is just really, really bad, and um, at the same time, there's in your spirit, it flourishes, there's life. There's a way for this to emerge or re-emerge. So Richard, do you want to add to that? Oh, I agree with that comment, uh, comments, plural, but uh, it's an interesting aspect for sure. Nothing beyond that. It's like a, a phoenix rising out of the ashes, right? Yeah. That's what I feel like when I have, we have all the ashes in our neighborhood. We do. I have yet to see the phoenix rise, but it, it will be. So yeah. what you were talking about um, with the black, shall I mention it now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So the void has no color, but that doesn't mean there can't be color. So the void can manifest, that's probably not a correct word, because language really can't explain enlightenment. True. Words don't work. <laughs> it's experiencing. So there is a void, but when there is color, it's not coming from you, it's coming from the void. Mm -hmm. And you can see color in the 3D world or in the 4 and 5D world in auric fields. But when you are in the state of the nature of mind or, or the I am state, it's colors that manifest, and I, I can't say they manifest, but they appear. <laughs> and those colors are part of the enlightenment. And as the Bon said, with light, there can be more than a thousand suns and moons having light. 
when you're experiencing it. So it can be light, white light, or it can be a rainbow of colors, or it could be anything. But it's a spiritual and a self-realized into the oneness. Mm -hmm. So Richard, you want to give us any um, update from the higher worlds and its attainment? Well, basically, uh, there's quite a bit of it. You've highlighted some areas that I think you yeah, could, you could read to on. us that would be good. You know, man is twofold, mortal and immortal. The mortal is in its last, the immortal in its first age but it's only within this twofold world which finds its expression in the sense world that he can acquire the requisite faculties to lead the world to immortality. Indeed, this task is precisely to gather the fruits of the mortal for the immortal. And as he glances at himself as the result of his own work in the past, he cannot but say, I have in me the elements of a decaying world. They are at work in me. And I can only break their power little by little thanks to the new immortal elements coming to life within me. This is the path leading man, man from death to life. Could he but speak to himself with full consciousness at the hour of his death, he would say, the perishing world was my taskmaster. I am now dying as a result of the entire past in which I am enmeshed. Yet the soil of mortal life has matured the seeds of immortal life. I carry with me into another world of the past came into an end with birth. Life in the sense world is wrested from universal death by the newly formed life germ. The time between birth and death is merely an expression for the sum of values wrested from the dying past by the new life, and illness is nothing but the continued effect of the dying portions of the past. That's absolutely Very interesting. perfect. Yeah. It, it all melts, melts together. together. Yeah. It was absolutely perfect. It's all inner light. <laughs> so he's basically saying exactly what we're all saying. I think so. That we are having an expression of an experience between the void to where we are, mm -hmm. to going back to the void mm -hmm. and and the uh, nature of the illness uh, uh, of before, during, and after. And now the oneness. And now the oneness. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to add in them. And he wants to add from cosmic memory. Go ahead. <laughs> the one who is able to struggle through to this view will no longer be held by the idea that he might be emerged, or rather estranged from, your, from reality and practical life by occupying himself with the science of the spirit. He will then realize how the true science of the spirit does not make life poor, but richer. It will certainly not mislead him into under, underestimating telephones, railroad technology, and aerial navigation. But in addition, he will see many other practical things which remain neglected today. When one believes only in the world of the senses and therefore recognizes only part of the truth rather than all of it. Wow. Nice. So the technology, let's talk about the technology that's coming in we have heard that there will be a releasement of 5,000 patents coming that will bring us new technology that will help the human body, that will help the communication, that will help transportation so that we can evolve beyond the, the limitations that we are facing today. Is this the quantum energy? Is this the Tesla energy? The Tesla energy, uh, the wireless communications and things that we'll have. Anyway, we're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back. Thank you. Every journey begins with a single step. Are you ready to take yours? Here at Modesto Junior College, we can help you begin. The college offers a variety of programs and opportunities, including financial aid. MJC students can transfer to four-year colleges after graduating. Our instructors will prepare you for a successful future in the field of your choice. If you want a quality, affordable education with unlimited horizons, make Modesto Junior College your first step. Welcome back to You Matter. We're talking about Rudolf Steiner and the book Color. Uh, these are the four formulas. So green represents the lifeless image of the living, a photocopy or picture of the original. Peach blossom represents the living image of the soul. White or light represents the soul's image of the spirit. 
and black represents the spiritual image of the lifeless. We covered all four in this conversation that we had here today. In each color we have discovered an image of one kind or another, but the color itself is never the reality, only an image. In the first we have the image of the living, then of the soul, then of the spirit, and then the lifeless. By taking the kingdoms of nature in this way, we are able to ascend stage by stage from the lifeless to the living, then to the realm of the ensouled beings, and finally to the beings of spirit. In a similar way, I can go from black to green to peach blossom and to white. And then just as Anne explained to you, you can go from the void to the, to the, to the light and, and back, and, and we're all oneness. And just as I can ascend from the lifeless through the living to the beings of soul and spirit, so the world around me appears in its images. And as I go from black to green to peach blossom and to white, just as Constantine and Ferdinand and Felix and so on are real people, I can follow them down their ancestral line. I can look at their portraits in turn and see the images of their line of ancestry. The world is there before me with its minerals, its plants, its animals, and it's a spiritual kingdom insofar as man is taken as the spiritual. As we ascend through these realities, nature reveals their images to me. They are reflections cast by nature. The colored world is not reality. Even in nature itself, it is only an image. This was established here so that we can look into the true nature of color. For it does not help in the least to say that color is a subjective impression and it is of no significance at all to this, to the color. Since Einstein and the discovery of quantum physics, it has been known that everything that exists is energy. Energy is all there is. The only difference is that physical matter, such as a table, a chair, or a car, is the seen energy. The unseen energy is sound, light, radio waves, radiation. They vibrate at a different frequency and a different rate. Reiki is used to assist with many ailments. If you're having a surgery, if you um, need help recovering, if you were diagnosed with chronic pain, fatigue, inflammation, diabetes, arthritis, then uh, we can connect to the angels and the guides using tones, mantras, selenite swords of light. I use the Ankh to work within the physical pain body as well as the emotional field. Reiki can also be done in person or done remotely. I'm also a channel medium. I offer readings. If you would like to get involved in mentoring, you can please reach out to me on my website. I'll be forming groups now. If you would like to set up a session or get a reading or have any conversation about any of the pain or the inflammation or issues you're having, please submit a request to my website and reach out to me. Thank you. All right, welcome back to You Matter. We're gonna have this um, final conversation about um, all the colors. We've covered all the colors. We've talked about the cosmic memory, the knowledge of the higher worlds. We've talked about Hoboponopono. Are there any final statements you'd like to make? For me, there are just so many of these things that are interrelated. And even Christianity with Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. Nirvana, they're all interrelated, but it's the core. It's not all of the philosophy around it. It's mm -hmm. going inside rather than being outside and realizing that in oneself. Yeah. Yeah, so all roads lead to, to heaven, right? Nirvana. <laughs> all, all positive roads. <laughs> all roads. All roads are leading you home. And you can take many different paths. You can. You, know, you don't need a master. You can just do it on your own, anytime, anywhere. You don't have to meditate. And if you meditate, you don't have to sit up straight. You can lie down. Well, that's why they have the labyrinth mm -hmm. to represent the many paths. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can take the labyrinth and you take the walk and you go on the spiral and you... Probably the paths are And they've got a good one up in San Francisco at the Grace Cathedral. That's the right. labyrinth. The yeah. labyrinth. But I think the paths are infinite. You know, you can they think are. of as many as you want. It's just getting to where you came from. That's the experience 
exactly. that you're having in the, the that you choose to have in, the in my mind that you choose to have. Right. No matter how good or bad it is, you wanted to experience it. Right. Yeah. So we're all having a a human experience in a spiritual body or physical experience mm -hmm. in, in the body. And we're going back, 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 back to from whence we came. From whence we came. There's one right there. Right there. I think you just read oh, I think I read that one. Is that page? But there's not too much to add, actually. I mean, ultimate spiritual perfection is basically the format that we're dealing with, quote, eternally, eternal life, if yes. you will. Yes. And that's the perfected state. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay. So there must be a lot of truth to what we just said. There was. <laughs> and, now, and, and all these different teachings and all the information that we brought here today, I hope you received something good out of all of this. And um, I thank all of you for coming today. Thank and you. Rich. Welcome. We can and, even be and, and uh, your friend. Sufi. D dervish whirling here, right, right, you know? right. and we'll reach that state if we keep up with it. <laughs> right, right. Okay, we'll be right back, and then we'll get a thank you. At this moment, in Stockton, Sacramento, and San Francisco, a University of the Pacific student has made a decision. A decision to learn, live, and lead with purpose in mind. Here, it's all about moments. Moments that change lives, families, communities, economies, the world. At University of the Pacific, these moments give life purpose. They give us purpose, too. After all, we share one future. Join us, University of the Pacific. Welcome back to You Matter. We had a wonderful conversation today. I want to thank Ann. I want to thank Richard and his friend who is on the phone. And in closing, we want to thank you, the Creator, for these gifts of peace, love, and gratitude, joy, and health as we walk in our ancestors' footprints, saying yes to the angels, yes to the ancestors and guides, leading me forward on to making the right choices, to being present in the moment today, to my higher self for leading me here to be with all of you. And may you and your families be blessed today and every day as we close the show with love and peace.